and welcome to Condon's Current Events Roundtable. Today we have two very exciting guests, and um, <laughs> I don't know, Bruce, you want to be an exciting guest? Uh, sure. <laughs> um, and, 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 they're, and it's not just like, they're, they're very knowledgeable about what's going on in behavioral health, substance abuse, prevention, and treatment. And I first want to introduce, um, to my right, I will introduce you, Tricia. I want to welcome you back. Thank you. Um, I'm glad I'm, glad, I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. You've been here a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad sure. that you're back. And this is Tricia Bout. So your name? Boutage. Boutage. Everybody <laughs> pronounces your name wrong. So we know it's at least yeah. Tricia, mm -hmm. and it's Boutage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and Tricia is the former project director of Nicasa Women's Services. Mm -hmm. And when I say former, you're now a volunteer, but not really because you're still working. You're just <laughs> not getting a salary, I think, right? I think that's what it's really about. It's a great yeah. example to set. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and again, we have another guest today, and it's Bruce, Bruce Johnson, and he's the chief executive mm -hmm. officer of NICASA, and also he's the former. Uh, Police Chief of Round Lake Park. That's right. And welcome. Thank you very much. Are you going to wave one of these to make <laughs> me an exciting guest? Yes. Because um, that's not going to happen without your help. And oh. how is it? It will. I'm going to start with Bruce. Bruce, how is it that you became Chief Executive Officer mm. of NACASA, oh, which is a nice treatment story. facility, and when you were the Chief um, of Police, you were putting them into right that you were putting him away in the jail and now you're 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 up doing prevention work mm -hmm. how did that all come about well it's first of all i'd just like to say that you know they both have chief in them and i can spell chief so that <laughs> made the transition easy right. um but actually uh you know i spent 20 plus years in law enforcement mm -hmm. and um I worked in uh, my final last 10 and a half years in a community that had a lot of issues. We had a lot of challenges. Um, we had changing demographics, um, certainly a lot of drug and gang uh, problems within our community. And it was just, a, just very difficult for our residents um, to even contemplate getting help for the issues they had. So I was, I was used to dealing with a population that had very few resources and very few services. And we were able to meet some of those by opening up a, a Latino Family Resource Center, Mano Mano Family Services. Um, and I think it was through that work and the work that I had volunteered with NICASA, um, one of the things that I went to was um, an idea that the former CEO had, which was, you know, the kids um, in Round Lake and Waukegan, North Chicago, they were struggling with science, math, and technology. And they brought together uh, a group of us from the community. Some were from Abbott Labs and Baxter, um, wonderful people in the community. And they, they uh, again, I don't know why I was invited. The other people were wonderful. But uh, we came together for a lunch, and they said, what can we do to help these kids? And at the time, and I still do, I teach a, a forensics course. Uh, a criminal justice forensics course. And um, I wrote on a sheet of paper, well, certainly there is science, math, and technology in forensics, which is crime scene processing. So um, I thought, okay, I can do this. I wrote it down on a piece of paper and somebody from NICASA called me and said, you know, you've been involved with us in our teen court program. Um, we see that you've written that you could do this. What could you do? And I said, well, I would give uh, some form of a lecture and then a practical application of that and I would have the students, uh, the kids in this case, um, you know, experientially mm -hmm. doing the work. So they said, well, that sounds great. Would you do that in Round Lake and Waukegan? I said, sure. So I actually had a college curriculum that I never altered. I used that same curriculum for middle school and high school kids and they did wonderfully at it. Um, and the kids really seem to embrace it. And, you know, uh, when you look at 
a crash scene with cars. There's calc. There's you know trigonometry. Um, there's physics involved. Uh, crime scenes, blood spatter, and all the things that you do. Uh, fingerprint development. Right. Kids just loved it. So and they watch a lot of television. They with do detective shows we, now, and it has a lot of the same things going on. So this right. way they're getting accurate information because sometimes from television uh, programs oh, yeah. it's a little exaggerated. The, but so they're getting the, the correct information. We on, we call that the forensics. We call that the CSI effect. Mm -hmm. So um, you can solve any crime in a half hour. But uh, but so anyways, the the um, kids embraced it, and um, eventually I got a phone call uh, and it was from this former CEO and she said would you come to my office so I thought she's gonna ask me to do this in another school now, is what still, I was thinking were you still the police chief, chief. Police chief yeah. so I'm a, I'm a police chief and I see we always tell that police chiefs all they do is sit in their office no. and tell every all the other police members no, to do. no 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 you, you know. gotta you gotta go out into the community yeah. you gotta work with the schools you have to be a community champion and a community builder um, but I went into her office and um, she was a, a small diminutive uh, woman and she got up from her desk, walked around and really didn't say anything other than this. Her exact sentence to me was, I want to give you the best job in the world, mine. So I looked at her and I'm like, cop, gun, badge, social worker, how does that work? And she said, I've been watching you for 10 years. The so things... you're a former social worker? No. Never. She, oh, she was, was a social worker. She was a yeah. social worker. So I'm looking so at her going, her job. how does this work? Yes. Uh, because I'm not, I, I'm not that social yeah. worker. I'm a Marine. I'm a police chief. That's right. How does this work? And, and so, we'll go back to that because yeah. you've been a Marine for you were, you were 12 months tour of duty in Afghanistan, which I want to get back to. So I'm going to talk to mm -hmm. Appreciate sure, it. but I just want to finish. So okay. I, literally, she she said, you know, I, you should do this. I've been watching you. This is what you love yeah. to do. So it took me about two weeks to say yes, and, and then and I made the transition. The, and how long have you been in the job? Mm -hmm. So this is my ninth year. Ninth year. Yep. So how do you like I that? Remember, I remember when he came to Nicasa, and he introduced himself and said, <laughs> you are all the experts. Right. I will learn from you. Yep. And it's, it's been wonderful. My exact yeah, words were, one. I can't carry your clinical briefcases, <laughs> yeah. so you will have to help me chart the yeah. course. Now, mm -hmm. now uh, Tricia, you, um, you came from the state of Illinois in social services, mm -hmm. okay, and what are you, yes, and in, mm -hmm. yeah, to Nicasa, but what have you, you monitor programs for women and children? Or you did? Yeah, I, not necessarily monitor, but help to make implement things. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. implemented some of the programs. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. kind of like a an organizer, community organizer type of. We always hear the president came from community organizer background. Oh, so yeah. I think it's I think it's the backbone of what we do. The backbone of what being, you do, being community organizers. Yeah. And so I you, do. so so you came from the state of Illinois, and how did you how do I tell end you, I, up in the casa? I found my casa because one of the things I did was monitor programs throughout the state, and so I got the pleasure of of finding my casa as a monitor. And when I, the first thing I did when I walked in the door and saw the way they did business at the women's services. So this is the way it should be done. And I want to be here. And also, uh, I think they if you can't afford it, mm -hmm. you still get treatment. Yes. Because it's a nonprofit mm -hmm. and or sliding scale, and um, which is really good because there's so many people. Yeah. Um, I think earlier we were at lunch together, and you were telling me, Bruce, and you were also telling me, Tricia, that so many of the funds have been cut mm -hmm. in, in Illinois. Every year they chop a little off. Every and, year. And, 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 and what you said was now the new uh, mental, the new, uh, for, pe for people with mental disorders, ends mm -hmm. up the jail. And jail and prison. And that's a, that's a travesty for mm -hmm. our state where, you know, we've closed mental health hospitals, um, places where people could seek out services and so they've closed them and there's not been an adequate safety net. And what happens is that unfortunately they become victims or offenders or in some cases they pass. Mm -hmm. And 
when they're interrupted by law enforcement, they end up going to jail. And, you know, Cook County Jail is currently the largest service provider of mental health services in the country. Now, that, that should alarm people to say this is not how we want to treat people, mm -hmm. and we certainly don't want to incarcerate people that don't belong in jail or prison, and that's a problem. So, so a lot of them, do they ever get any mental health support in jail or, they, they or support do. services? Or? They do, but it's not the place that they should be receiving those services. Right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I think that we as a state need to say um, to our elected officials that prevention is really important. We need to add money to that line item. Mental health services, addiction services, we need to add um, money to those line items because without that you're gonna have more crime you're gonna have more victims and you're certainly gonna have to build more prisons and jails so that's not that's not the answer um, some people do need to go to jail and they do need to go to prison but so many of our jails and prisons have a population that really needs um, some form of behavioral health services and honestly a connection to primary mm -hmm. care services as well. So how many, mm -hmm. so Nicasa is in different, we're, we're mm. talking about Nicasa and, and and it's in uh, the different, uh, you have one in Buffalo Grove, you have Highland Park facilities, you have Mundelein, you have Waukegan, um, North, Chicago, North Chicago, and Round Lake. And Round Lake. And do we have a new one? And Zion. And Zion, and Zion. And that's right. So up north. we have eight mm -hmm. locations, okay. and uh, one is a residential facility uh, called Bridge House that we've run for mm -hmm. since 1972, and it's actually co-ed um, with Room for 20, uh, and it's an intricate and integral part of um, services that we offer not just to the county, but also to our specialty courts in Lake County. Mm -hmm. So the drug court, veterans court, mental health court, um, those courts utilize um, our services and uh, often they utilize this bridge house, which is a halfway house. Now when you say veterans, mm -hmm. uh, how does that differ than, uh, are they getting uh, services in the you know Veterans Administration hospitals, or why would they come to NACASA? Great, great question, and I think uh -huh. this is something that we all should be proud of. Um, the Chief Judge, John Phillips, um, he's really, the chief judge he's of, the Chief Judge of now. Of Illinois? No, of Lake County. Lake of Lake so County, of the okay. the 19th Circuit, uh, okay. of our Circuit okay. Court. Yeah. He, and he, along with a number of other judges, Judge Rossetti, Judge Stride, Judge Levitt, um, they really are championing um, these populations that need uh, specific wraparound services mm -hmm. in order to stay out of jail and mm -hmm. out of prison. And um, so they've developed what they call Therapeutic Intensive Monitoring Courts. TIM courts, and they're really specialty courts. And what they do is they identify individuals that may have been to prison multiple times, could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times, but they have a, in some cases, an alcohol or substance abuse issue, mm -hmm. or if they're a, a veteran's population, mm -hmm. um, they need special services. So Yeah, because they've been, I mean, they've been serving our country, yep. they've been deployed and and they come back the and it's been a problem back and forth and then they have mm -hmm. to get back into the community mm -hmm. and that's also with you with you with the women coming back too it's not just men Absolutely coming back right. but the women are True. you know are the women getting services too mm -hmm. as far as uh, you know the military to get reintegrated reintegrated into yeah. society again yeah. Yeah. and it's very hard because it these is. people have been time. there years right and, 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 and what they, happens is that they face a lot of the same problems that everybody faces, but um, the, the truth is that, um, unfortunately, many of the problems are masked with what we call self-medication, and that's mm -hmm. alcohol. In some cases, it's substance abuse. And um, we need to meet those individuals and give them the services that they need in order to interrupt in the veterans case, a criminal justice um, disposition that sends them to jail or prison. 
We don't want that to happen. Right, especially they've been serving us for Correct. so many years. Mm -hmm. We need to serve them. Absolutely. And, and, and the problem's gonna, gonna be exacerbated because you have many more, um, many more service members coming back. You have a downsizing mm -hmm. of our armed forces. So many are going to leave the service. And you know, it's very difficult for a veteran, for somebody in the armed forces to hear that we no longer need your services. And you're now, you're now discharged, you go back to your community, maybe you can't find a job, maybe you can't find an adequate job. Um, and then what happens is sometimes we see alcohol, some abuse and other risky behaviors um, take over and then unfortunately they're involved in the criminal justice system. And we have to take care of them and we have to figure out what they need and make sure that we give them every possible mm -hmm. service we can. Now, how do they, mm -hmm. how do they, um, Tricia, if you could address mm -hmm. this, how do they find a CASA? I mean, uh, you know, they're coming, they know about the veterans' hospitals and maybe right. they're filled up. We've had a problem in, in Arizona yeah. where they couldn't, yeah. uh, they've been on waiting lists. I don't know how, mm -hmm. I, maybe here in Illinois it's different. I'm sure every veterans' hospital is different. I mean, I used to work years ago. I was a, a nurse at veteran, a veterans' hospital. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I was just curious but uh, how they would find NACASA. You know, I think that's one of the strengths of NACASA is because there's many doors that someone can get into NICASA. If they're in the courts, they can get a referral. If they're um, But if they're in, in the, the community, courts, yeah, they're not in the courts and they want to come on their own, how do they right. even know about it? Because a lot of these community things are not advertised. I remember when my cousin lost her husband yeah. at a very early age, at four, in his mm -hmm. 40s, mm -hmm. and she lived in a house and she lost her house. It was in Winneka. Mm. She lost her house. She had three little children. Had One it. had autism. Mm -hmm. She had no clue how to find any support system, you know, right. what was available to her. How does NACASA, you know, get their name out? So Well, let's do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing that for You're us. doing Thank it. You. Thank Nicasa. you. NICASA.org. Yeah. We have a website. Yeah. We have one website that somebody can, can tap into and, and look at all the different services we have and then talk to the, get, they'll get referred to the right office. They have to call one number. Mm -hmm and they will, we will find a way to connect them to what they really do need, yeah. give them a good assessment, give them a, a, a good work plan. Yeah, because, you know, these, these programs exist, you know, they I know in, uh, in, in our area, in Lake County, you know, you know uh, but a lot of people just have no idea right. that they're it's even available. Well, it? I think you, you hit on something, and one thing is true that um, sometimes when you're the person with the problem, and you need help, it's hard for you to navigate and find services, mm -hmm. but friends and family members and loved ones can help to do that. I want to tell you something else. I sound like I'm bragging about Lake County, but I really do want to brag a little bit. Um, we have something new in Lake County, and it's called the Alliance for Human Services. And the idea is that it's kind of just what Tricia said. There's no wrong door. So if you come in, if you have a homeless problem, if you have any social service issue, you should be able to walk into one door and we're gonna be connected with something called Service Point where you're gonna be uh, referred to all the other agencies that you could get services from. And there's a follow-up to ensure that you get them. And I think follow-up is yeah. very important mm -hmm. because a lot of times people go to these programs, they go maybe three, four times, and then they drop out, and there's no follow-up. Right. And, I mean, we had Nicasa on the show before, and um, I remember one of the people now, her name was Debbie, yep. mm -hmm. who now is, uh, not only she, she was a former oh, Deborah client, Deborah mm -hmm. yep. client mm -hmm. and now she has a position with Nicasa, right. and yes. she's helping she's other people. And you also... And she's an advocate. And she's yeah. an advocate, yeah. right. right? Now you, you. I just wanted you mentioned something mm -hmm. to me about um, your synagogue. Mm -hmm. you, you're with your with the women of your synagogue. Right. You're taking these. You know, there's some lot of affluent women that don't mm -hmm. even know that some of these problems even exist. And what are mm -hmm. you doing? I think that was really interesting. What you're doing? It, it, it has been wonderful. It's been going on for no, for a year, and and we're planning to do it next year, and. Um, 
uh, the original concept was that the women at the synagogue would mentor the women in recovery. And we, you know, we'd had, we had meetings about what their needs were, what they'd like to have happen. Um, the beauty of it for me is that it's all, it's from day one, it's been a two-way street. It's not just the synagogue women mentoring the women in recovery. The synagogue women get so much and learn so much from the women in recovery because mm -hmm. it takes such great strength mm -hmm. to face your issues and to rebuild your life and to get your children back. And so there's a, they've learned a, an amazing degree of respect for each other and grown on both sides. That's interesting it because, you know, I'm a, I'm a psychologist and I have learned from my own patients mm -hmm. things I didn't even know. You know, we, we, when you go to school and you get your degree, but then the learning really starts outside right. of the school. Mm -hmm. That's when you really know when, you know, when you're working with somebody, how you're doing, what you're doing right, what, what needs still to be done. How, and most mm -hmm. problems is, people have problems that I think the most important thing is how to handle problems. Because yeah. sometimes problems don't vanish right. at one time. But if people learn how to handle the problems, then mm -hmm. they don't get so upset about it. And, then they, and also you have support systems here. Right. So they know that they're not alone. And going back That's to the, big one. yeah, and going back to the military, which needs yeah. they need so much, you know, um, support. And if they know that there's a support system out there, and other people mm -hmm. have, they're coming back to, to uh, civilization, so to speak, and they have a support system waiting for them. Well, and one of the things is, you know, I when I deployed, I came back and. Um, you know, I got some phone calls and I got letters um, asking me if I needed help and services. And the truth is most veterans are not going to say, I have a problem. They're not going to say, I need counseling. I need mental health counseling. You know, there's a stigma associated with that. Um, and, you know, we've, we have people coming back that have sacrificed and put their life on the line. They've seen things that... Um, nobody ever wants to see or experience and they come back and if they have an issue it's so important for family members friends loved ones to take notice of changes in behavior um, any of the the signs that would lead you to believe that they're abusing alcohol or substances or they have some other issue whether it's anxiety depression PTSD, whatever it is, um, you don't have to know what it is. You don't have to have a degree. You just need to know that this person needs help, and you have to try to get them to help. And that goes for the family members of these servicemen and women as well. Uh, the families, the spouses, the children, um, there's often... Issues. Do you have a program for those people, the the, the, the family members too, yeah. to get? How do they do? You, you, that, that's another thing. Yeah. You have a, um, because you know you, you say, well, if your husband is showing this kind of sign or that yes. sign, but maybe where they have a, a support class, so sure. they recognize the, some of the signs. So, is there mm -hmm. something going so I can, on? Yeah, there mm -hmm. is, and and I can tell you that you know our. Uh, Federal Health Care Center, Lovell, James A. Lovell Health Care Center, does a, does a very good job, but um, our Lake County Health Department, and under the direction of Dr. Ted Testa, had written a federal grant to start what is called the Lake McHenry Veterans and Family Services. And they have a number of programs that help veterans and families, and that's the key, is that it also mm -hmm. includes family. And some of that could be equine therapy, you know, working with horses and riding horses. Um, some of it is just things you would go, wow, that's really wonderful mm -hmm. that, that we have that. So um, there's a lot of partners engaged and involved with the Lake and McHenry. Wasn't that Mrs. Romney? Um she she had she had cancer mm -hmm. and she worked you know she rode horse it's something with the therapeutic. horses she it's, did a therapeutic it course it is thing, very therapeutic and she came on television that mm -hmm. time talked about her cancer and how horses were yep. very comforting for mm -hmm. her and veterans find mm -hmm. the find, some veterans find the same thing and i think it's you know it's again it's wonderful that lake county has we actually have these things 
one of the issues is we have to get people to the services. So that's where we need the family members and loved ones mm -hmm. and friends to recognize that, okay, we really need to help this person and make the calls. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, uh, the county find out that here's a, an issue with a veteran. It may have come from a police department. It may have come from a family member or a loved one. They will go out to that veteran, to the family, and really start to, mm -hmm. to help right at that very point. And um, I think we have many of the programs and services in place. Um, certainly, there will never be enough. Um, but we've got to take advantage of what we do have, mm -hmm. and we have to identify those in need as early as yes. we can. Yeah, that's very, that's okay. extremely important. Now, do they have, do you have some kind of a f fundraisers? Mm. Do, how, did, how does this, you know, <laughs> how do you get your money and so, everything like that so, I mean, for these yeah. programs? I mean, these are, I mean, people have to get paid too. You know, people mm -hmm. that run some of the programs also are salaried, yeah. correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, not yeah. everybody's a volunteer. Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like more yeah. volunteers. We are volunteers, you know, <laughs> yes. at um, our producers. You know, yeah, you right. are. Tell, a lot of people right. don't know that this the station is run by all volunteers. It's a huge yeah. public service. Yes, we do a public service, and you know, we're, we all come from different backgrounds. I'm mm -hmm. a psychologist. We're, mm -hmm. We have uh, all people from different walks of life, and and my our group here, camera people, director, all the people working.